Good morning. So we'll go through a couple of announcements real quick first. Um, after the service, we have a ridiculous amount of salads and raspberries and maybe blackberries. I don't know what all is back there. But guys, we have a, a ridiculous amount of produce that's been dropped off. And please, please go to the kitchen. Please get armloads of it and take it out of here. <laughs> because our refrigerator is stuffed full. We can put nothing else in there. You have to take it, please. <laughs> um, also, on an unrelated note, but wow, the timing. Um, next week, we're going to be handing out brochures and uh, talking about starting our, our annual corporate fast. So, I'm excited for that. Prayer and fasting coming up next week. Um, grab some produce. <laughs> <laughs> New Year's Eve. If you don't have anything to do on New Year's Eve, even if you do have something to do on New Year's Eve, feel free to stop out here. We're doing a family night. Uh, 8 p.m. to midnight, we're going to watch the ball drop, and then I'm going to say, okay, everybody get out of here. Go home. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> uh, no, but really, we're going to have a great time. Uh, we're going to have some crazier games. We're going to have some laid-back games. Um, I'm going to break out some board games and some cards, and we'll open up the Narthex, and we'll have finger food snack things. Feel free to bring some finger food snack things. Um, and let's just come out and have a good time, celebrate the end of this year and, and the beginning of the next one together. Um, I think that's all I got. <laughs> we're going to start in Ephesians 1.5, and we're going to pretty much stay there. So if you want to go to Ephesians 1.5, I'm going to read this verse like a billion times today. So you should leave knowing it. Ephesians 1.5, in love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Christmas just came and came and went and we have been celebrating the birth of Jesus and this is why right here so I'm gonna I'm gonna read this verse again in love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will and then I'm gonna break it down piece by piece in love that is God's motivation for what he did that's why Jesus came because he loved us that's why he does the things that he does. That's why, that's why he gives us blessings, because he loves us. Matthew 7 says, Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good, give good gifts to those who ask him? That's why God gives us blessings, because he loves us. It's also why he gives us trials. Now, Colton, come on. You're, you're saying God's putting me through a trial because he loves me? Really? This doesn't feel like love right now. But Romans, Paul says, we also glory in sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope, and hope does not put us to shame. God allows us to go through trials because it builds us up. The things that don't completely destroy us, they build us up. And sometimes, sometimes we got things in our lives that we need to have broken down so that we can be built up into what God wants us to be. When, when God allowed the Israelites to go into Egypt, they were enslaved in Egypt, and they were there for a long time, and then it was really difficult for them to leave. And when they did leave, later, God says, I allowed you to go through the refining furnace of Egypt. That furnace built them up to be the nation that they needed to be to inherit the blessings that they needed later, that they were going to get later. That, that was a necessary part of their formation. Discipline. In Proverbs it says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. Discipline is not fun. If you're in any position of authority as a parent, as, uh, as somebody who oversees other people, discipline is never 
fun, but it's necessary. And if you don't have discipline, things fall apart quick. If everybody just does everything any way they want to, it's anarchy, and things just fall apart. And God disciplines those that he loves. God also wants, wants love to be our motivation. It's his motivation, and he wants it to be ours. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied to him, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. And then Jesus, talking to his disciples, says, A new command that I give to you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So first, Jesus says, you see, you see this book? He says, if you can love God and love each other, you really don't need all these laws that are in this book. Because this is what it all hangs on. The prophets, this is what, this is what they're trying to tell you. The law, this is what I was trying to tell you. Love me and love each other. And Jesus says, to love one another as he loved us to death. And by this will everyone know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Our love as Christians, as disciples, should be so radical that when people see it, they know. They should know by the way you carry yourself, by the way you treat other people, that's a Christian. People don't treat people like that. That's, gotta, that's something different. He predestined us. Now, destiny is something that we see all the time in, in pop culture and in movies. And, and when, you th when you look at like, I don't want to get too far off topic here, but like The Matrix. I don't know if any of you have seen The Matrix, maybe. Neo, The One. Um, but it's, it, it's your destiny, Right? And the definition of destiny is a hidden power believed to control what will happen in the future of fate. Events that are necessarily going to happen to a particular person or thing in the future. And I say predestined is something that, using that definition, something that God determined beforehand to be. God determined beforehand. In love, that's his motivation, he predestined us. He determined beforehand because of his love that he was going to adopt us to sonship through Christ Jesus in accordance with his pleasure and will. It is something not that God needed to happen, not something that just coincidentally came about. This is something that God determined beforehand that he was going to do. He knew, he knew that we were going to abandon him. He knew what it was going to cost him to get us back. He counted that cost and he said, I'm going to do this. He knew beforehand for adoption to sonship. Adoption means the adoptee becomes the legal heir of the adopter and it terminates the rights of the natural parents. The act by which an adult formally becomes the guardian of a child and incurs the rights and responsibilities of a parent. God assumed those responsibilities. He knew the cost, but he assumed that responsibility. What's the significance of sonship, of being a child? Number one, protection, right? As a parent, you protect your children. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. He longs to protect his children. And sometimes... We don't always see a physical protection here in, the, here in this world because this world is sinful and fallen. And there are Christians every day all around the world being persecuted, being executed. Being, even even Jesus' disciples were mistreated. The, the only one who wasn't executed ended up being boiled alive and exiled. The rest of them beheaded, crucified, speared. 
But even then, God says, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body and not the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy the soul and the body in hell. Even when we're unsure of our physical protection, we can be sure that if we have Jesus, eternally, we're secure. We're safe. This, this vehicle that's carrying me through this world right now, this can be injured. This can be destroyed. This can be torn down. But my soul, Satan can't touch that. Ain't no one out here that can touch that. Ain't nobody in the world that can touch that. My soul is secure in Christ. And you know what? Each one of us that call God our Father, our souls are secure in Christ. We have that protection. Also, as children, we share in the inheritance. And that is exciting, right? Because parents leave an inheritance for their children. And God is a wealthy father. <laughs> for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And the Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And now if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in, or in order that we may also share in his glory. We are co-heirs with Christ. Everything that Christ went to the cross for, everything that he experienced after that, sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, we get to share in the inheritance of Christ. We... <laughs> We get to experience that paradise that Jesus told the thief on the cross next to him, this day you'll be in paradise with me. We get to experience that. Every blessing that God has, we'll get a share of that. Let me take off my jacket. I'm getting a little warm. I'm not sure y'all are awake, though. <laughs> Morgan's awake. Forgiveness and unconditional love. Our Father loves us unconditionally. He forgives us. As, as a kid, I screwed up a lot. A lot. And mom got mad. Mom disciplined me. But she always loved me. She always forgave me. And now, she doesn't hold those things against me that I had before. And God, he said that our sins, when we repent, our sins are separated from us as far as the east is from the west. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided the property between them. And not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, and he set off for a distant country, and there he squandered his wealth in wild living. And after he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Dad... Give me the inheritance now. Give me what you've got now. I'm out of here. I'm going to take my money, my full pocketbook. I'm going to head off. I'm going to head off to the big city, and I'm going to live it up. I'm going to get me a loft apartment right downtown, right near all the clubs, and I am going to party it up. And when this club shuts down, party at my house, y'all. Let's go. All right? All the drink I can buy for everybody. And then he ran out of money. When you live like that, and then you run out of money, you run out of friends. And so he did the only thing he could think to do. I'm going to find whatever work I can find. And he started feeding pigs. And he, he <laughs> didn't even have food to feed himself so that he wanted to eat what the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. And when he came to his senses, that was 
time. He said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I'll set out and I'll go back to my father and I'll say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And so he got up and he went to his father. Man, I work and I work and I work and I, I don't even make it. My dad's slaves get more than this. His servants get better than this. I'm just, I know I don't deserve it, but I'm just going to go back and ask if I can just work like one of them. Well, he was still a long way off. His father saw him and was filled with compassion for him, and he ran to his son, and he threw his arms around him, and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against you in heaven, and I know that I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And the father said to his servants, Quick, bring me the best robe that we have and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, put sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and now he's found. And they began to celebrate. This son who didn't deserve to be called a son anymore. He took his father's wealth. He went off. He squandered it. He partied it up. He he had a grand old time. He ran out of money. He said, I did my dad wrong. And he came back and he said, Dad, I'm not even worthy to be called your son anymore. And dad says, I love you. Welcome home. Let's get this kid dressed. Let's get him cleaned up. Kill the cow. Let's celebrate. Let's feast Thanksgiving dinner. All right? Meanwhile, the older son was in the field, and when he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. And so he called one of the servants, and he asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. That's the kind of love that our God has for us. Right there. We can screw up, we can, we can really mess up, but it's forgiven when we come back and we say, I screwed up. I recognize that I was wrong. I don't deserve your love anymore. And he throws his arms around us and he says, bring me the best robe we got. Through Christ Jesus, in love his motivation. He predestined, he planned for it, for adoption to sonship. He calls us his children through Christ Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. God chose Jesus as our Savior, his Son, and he used the death of this sinless man to pay the penalty of death that each of us owes. He gave his son so that each of us may be adopted as his children into his family. No matter where we've laid our heads, whether in that penthouse apartment bought with his squandered money, whether down with the pigs, No matter what we've squandered away, no matter what he's blessed us with and we've screwed up, no matter who we've associated with, no matter what we've done, if we come crawling humbly home, he runs to us. And he says, slaughter the fat calf, because today we celebrate. And we do that because of Jesus, because of what he gave through Jesus, because of that sacrifice. Jesus says, I just left my slideshow. Jesus says, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who don't need to repent. Worship team, if you want to come back up. And in Romans It says, all who call on the Lord will be saved. (laughs) In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Christ Jesus in accordance with his pleasure and will. He takes pleasure in this fact. And when we come home, 
there will be rejoicing in heaven. More rejoicing in heaven for one sinner who repents than 99 who don't need to. Church, life gets messy and hard and sometimes we don't realize what we're doing and we end up down with the pigs and we don't even realize it. And we look around and we say, how did I get here? How did I get here? My father's servants eat better than this. And the prodigal son, the son that came home, he realized at some point what I had, I wasn't happy with, and I left it for this, and it was so much better than this. It was so much better than where I'm at now. If you have never experienced the freedom that's in Christ, man, you're missing out. If you've never experienced that unconditional love, that love that doesn't break, that love that when you screw up and you mess up, you, you've torn it all down, you've run out of money, you've run out of everything, and you come home and you say, I messed up, and he throws his arms around you, man, you're missing out. And I'm telling you, you can have that. You can have that right now. Romans 10, 13, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And when you're saved, that's being a child of God. That's having that sonship. That's being adopted into sonship right there. And you can have that. And if you've had that before and you've messed up, you screwed up, you don't feel it right now, you can have it back. You come up to this altar, you crawl, you fall before the Lord and you say, Lord, I know I've messed up and I don't deserve it. I'm not worthy to be called your son. And I'm sorry. And he'll throw his arms around you. And he'll say, bring me the best robe. And he'll put a ring on your finger and he'll say, we're going to celebrate today. We're going to celebrate today. The Spirit doesn't make us slaves. The Spirit makes us free. Church, I'm going to invite you. I'm going to invite everybody here. If you don't have that, or if you, you're not feeling that, I want you to come up. And you know what? If you want to come up to the side, somebody's going to pray with you. If you want to come up by yourself, you can stay right here in the middle. And we'll just let you pray yourself. It'll be you and God. But church, church, don't miss out. Father God, thank you for your love and your freedom and your forgiveness and your protection. God, thank you that we don't have to be slaves. You have set us free. Your yoke is easy. God, let us not be dragged down by the things of this world, but God, let us find freedom in you. Let us run back to you. Father, we love you. May all the glory go to you today.